السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ألا وإن أصدق الكلام كلام الكلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So inshallah ta'ala today we're gonna we're gonna start over with the um, explanation of al usul al thalatha due to the uh, the big breaks and gaps that we had and um, also um, we're trying to have all of the lessons recorded so that people can follow or catch up if they miss a class I also chose to um, use an explanation that was recently done by Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul who is a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an assistant teacher in the in Umm Qura University in Mecca. He's the younger brother of uh, Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul, and um, he he's uh, um, he he recently did this, did did this explanation. He finished this maybe a couple of a week ago or so. So in this explanation, he speaks about some current affairs that are going on right now in the uh, in the Muslim Ummah or in the world. So Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, he was recommended by many of the scholars, the likes of Sheikh Rabi'at, even had in Medkhali, Sheikh Rabi'at declared him to be a scholar, um, and many others. I, I sent a link, I put a link in the WhatsApp group for the biography of Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, so Shalat Ali brothers can read, up, read, up, read about him. Um, <clears throat> and I also sent a link to the biography of Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimullah Ta'ala at Tamimi. So we we'll begin. So Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul he begins by saying, "Fasofa nabda bi idni Allahi bi dirasati muhtasar." Fi ilm al aqida, muhim muhimin wa mufid. He says, "So we're going to begin with the permission of Allah, studying a summarized essay regarding the science of Islamic creed." An important and beneficial essay. وَلَهُ مَكَانَةٌ عِنْدَ الْعُلَمَاءِ And this essay has a, lo- has a lofty status with the scholars. وَمَنْزِلَةٌ مَشْهُورَةٌ مَعْلُومَةٌ It has a well-known and famous status. هذا المختصر هو الأصول الثلاثة تأليف شيخ الإسلام بحق Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab ibn Sulaiman al Tamimi al Najdi al Salafi al Mawludi Senator Hamsata Ashra wa Miatin wa Elfin wa Mutawafa Senator Sittin wa Miataini wa Elf Rahimullah Ta'ala. This summarized essay is the three fundamental, the three fundamental principles of Al Islam. <coughs> it was authored by the Sheikh of Islam with every right. Muhammad, the son of Abdul Wahhab, the son of Sulaiman, from the Tamimi tribe, from the place in Arabia called An Najd, the Salafi, the follower of the pious predecessors, who was born in the year 1115 after the Hijra, and he died in the year 1206 after the Hijra. May Allah have mercy upon him. <clears throat> هذا العالم الجليل ولد بالعيينة. He said this magnificent scholar that is Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab was born in a city called Al Uyayna. A city called Al Uyayna. Al Uyayna. Al Uyayna is an Al Uyayna was an area of Najd. Al Uyayna was an area of Najd. And Najd was an area of 
of Arabia. So Nejd was in is, is in Arabia, um, and Uyaina was a part of Nejd. This is current day Saudi Arabia, but back at these are some of the older terminologies they would call it. They would call some of those areas. They had one area called Nejd and Ahsa. These are like some older uh, uh, um, borders or you know ways they would separate the areas back in those days. Um, <coughs> I, I believe they, they still do have an area they call Nejd. I'm not ne right, but I'm not sure if it still has the same borders that it had, you know, during the time of the Sheikh. <clears throat> so the Sheikh was born in Al Uyaina. Uyaina was a it was a town or a city in Nejd. Wakana Abuhu Aliman Kabiran Mashhur Mashhuran His father was a great scholar who was well known for his knowledge. That is the that is the father of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. وَكَانَ جَدُّهُ عَالِمًا نَجْدٍ فِي زَمَانِهِ His grandfather, that is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahab's grandfather, he was the scholar of Najd during his time. اشتغل بالعلم فحفظ القرآن وحفظ الأحاديث ولازم العلماء واستفاد منهم في التحرر في في التحرر في طلب الحق. Sheikh Muhammad al Wahhab, he busied himself with knowledge of the, of the deen. He memorized the Quran, he memorized prophetic narrations, had a hadith, and he clung to the scholars and he benefited from them. He benefited from, he benefited from them, striving hard, meaning that he, he learnt from them to strive hard to seek, uh, in seeking the truth. واستمر في ملازمة العلماء والرحلة إليهم فأخذ عن جلة من العلماء. So he continued sticking to the scholars and traveling to them, and he ended up taking or sitting with a great deal of scholars. رحمة الله عليهم أجمعين. May Allah have mercy upon them all. وله من المؤلفات كتاب التوحيد وكشف الشبهات الأصول الستة. القواعد الأربعة وغيرها من الكتب الكثيرة والمفيدة التي شهد له علماء عصره ومن بعدهم إلى يومنا هذا بالعلم والإتقان وحسن التصنيف وحسن المقصد أو المقصد المقصد وباتباع الدليل رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. He has many books. That is Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab has many books. And um, in the link that I sent. Um, the brother Abu Kharij from the UK, he was translating a talk that was given by Sheikh Salah al Fawzan regarding some of the misconceptions or the doubts uh, revolving around the Sheikh Muhammad Wahhab and his and his call. And he and he mentions, which is very true, that um, when you listen to that brief biography he gave, you can understand the atmosphere that the Sheikh was in and why he wrote so many books regarding Tawheed. So one of his books was Kitab al-Tawheed, the book of Tawheed. He wrote another book called Kashf al-Shubuhat, which means removing the doubts. He had another book called Al-Usul al-Sitta, the six uh, rules. He had another uh, principles. He had another book called Al-Qawaid al-Arba'ah. So inshallah ta'ala, what, what, what I would like to do is once we're finished with Al-Usul al-Thalatha, we would do Al-Usul al-Sitta. And then after that, Al-Qawaid al-Arba'ah. And the Sheikh uh, Ahmed Bazmul he says, and he has other books. He has other books. He has many other books. Many other beneficial books. And the scholars of his time, and the scholars that after him, they bore witness that he had knowledge, and that he was. Uh, he had it's gone, which mean he, which meant basically he was uh, almost perfect in what he did, and that his auth, his his the books that he authored were very good, and that he had inshallah good intention, and that he followed the dalil, he followed the evidence. May Allah have mercy upon him. May Allah have a, a wide and a vast mercy upon him. Wa Shaykh al Islam Muhammad Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab tarjumatuhu mashhuratun mustafiba. The Sheikh of Islam, Muhammad, the son of Abdul Wahhab, his biography is famous and it's mustafidah in the Talabat al-Ilm wa in the Muslimin. 
and it's well known and widespread amongst the students of knowledge and amongst the Muslims. وَكِتَابُهُ الْأُصُولُ الثَّلَاثَةَ كَمَا سَبَقَ هُوَ رِسَالَةٌ صَغِيرَةٌ صَغِيرَةُ الْحَجْمِ لَكِنَّهَا كَثِيرَةُ الْمَعَانِي وَالْفَوَائِدِ His book, the three fundamental principles, the three fundamental principles of Islam, the Sheikh says, as as I said previously, it is a small uh, essay. It's small in size, but it's very big as far as its meanings and the benefits that can be derived from it. كان العلماء يحفظونها طلاب العلم. The scholars used to make the students of knowledge memorize this book, the three fundamental principles of Islam. بل حتى العوام كان العلماء يحفظونهم هذه المتون. He said, even the everyday people, the laymen, the scholars used to make them memorize these texts, like Al Usul al Thalatha, Qawaid al Arba'a. خصوصاً Al Usul al Thalatha. He said, especially Al Usul al Thalatha. وقد كتب بعض العلماء إلى بعض الأمراء يحثه على نشر هذه الرسالة. He said, and some of the scholars of the some of the scholars um, wrote to some of the leaders. Some of the scholars of the past wrote letters to some of the leaders of the past, encouraging them to publicize this essay, The Three Fundamental Principles of Islam, in the villages as well as in the desert areas. <clears throat> and that they make the and that the leaders of the Masajid make the everyday people memorize these texts. لذلك كان العوام في تلك السنين والأعوام كانوا يحفظون الأصول الثلاثة. He said for this reason, the everyday people during those times, meaning the time of Sheikh Muhammad Wahab, which is only a couple hundred years ago, they used to memorize uh, these texts. وكانوا يردون على أهل الباطل من أهل الشركيات. And they used to refute, meaning the everyday layman people. They used to refute the people of shirk. They used to refute, refute the people of falsehood. They used to refute the people of falsehood from the people who committed shirk. Because they memorized these uh, principles and they understood them. So basically he's trying to say that... Uh, Ever since uh, Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab uh, started authoring these essays, even the everyday people used to memorize these books. And because they memorized these texts and they understood what was being said in them, they were able to respond or refute the people of falsehood from the people who used to commit shirk, that is, uh, associate partners with Allah and worship. لِأَنَّهُمْ حَفِظُوا هَذِهِ الْأُصُولِ because they memorized these fundamental principles. وَفَهِمُوهَا And they understood it. فَرَدُّوا عَلَىٰ أَيِّ شُبْهَةٍ يُثِيرُهَا بَعْضُ الْقُبُورِيِّنَ مِنْ أَحْلِ الشِّرْكِ So they used to refute any doubt that the grave worshippers used to bring from the people of shirk. That is the grave worshippers from the people of shirk. مِمَّا فَهِمُوهُ مِنْ هَذِي الرِّسَالَةِ Because of what they understood from this text. So basically the Shaykh is trying to say that even the everyday people used to memorize these texts and because they memorized them and they understood what was in it, they were able to refute the people who were upon falsehood and the people who used to commit shirk. هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ تَضَمَّنَتْ الْمَسَائِلُ الْأَرْبَعَةِ He said this essay, it contains the four principles or the four matters. الْعِلْم That is knowledge of the religion, al-amalu bihi, acting upon it, wa da'watu ilayhi, calling to it, was sabr, and having patience. Kama tadammanat bayan al-hanifiyyat al-samha, as it also contained al-hanifiyyat al-samha. Al-hanifiyyat al-samha, it is the religion, it is the, it is the, the practical monotheistic religion of Ibrahim. وَالتَّوْحِيدْ بِأَنْوَاعِهِ This essay also contains Tawheed, that is Islamic monotheism 
and its types. وَبَيَانْ الْوَلَاءُ وَالْبَرَاءُ And it clarifies الْوَلَاءُ وَالْبَرَاءُ الْوَلَاءُ وَالْبَرَاءُ means uh, association and enmity. Inshallah later on when we get to that section. And, 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 and enmity. Inshallah when we get, when we get to that section, I'll, um, the Shaykh uh, Ahmed Bazmul, he'll, 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 um, he'll explain it a little, a little more. وَبَيَانْ الْأُصُولَ الثَّلَاثَةَ and also this this uh, treatise, this this treatise, this this, this essay. Al wala bara means it means associate association, and disassociation, or it means it can mean love and hate, or it can mean uh, 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 allegiance and enmity, right? But I'm not going to go into too much detail because he has a section where he's going to break it down in, in detail. Okay. Um, and also he said that this uh, treatise, or this essay, it also clarifies the three fundamental principles of Islam. Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, he goes on, he says, Mal usul thalatha. He says, what is the three fundamental principles of Islam? Man, rub, man rabbuk, ma dinuk, wa man nabiyuk. And inshallah, brothers, have little patience because I'm reading the Arabic. It's a, it's a live translation. So inshallah have a little patience hearing the Arabic first, you know what I mean? And then uh, the English. He says the three fundamental principles of Islam is Men Rabbuk, Ma Dinuk, Wa Men Nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your Prophet? Al As'ilatu Lati Yus'alu Hal Mar'u Fi Khabri. The questions that a person will be asked in the grave. <coughs> جَعَلَهَا الْإِمَامُ مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْوَحَابِ رَحِمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَبَنَا عَلَيْهَا هَذِهِ الْأُصُولَ الثَّلَاثَةِ So Shaykh Muhammad al-Wahhab, he compiled or, these, or he put together these three uh, uh, principles or these, these three uh, questions and he built up, he based upon them these three fundamental principles. Excuse me. مَعْرِفُتُ الله Having awareness of Allah, ma'rifatu dinihi, having awareness of His Deen, wa ma'rifatu nabihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, having awareness of His Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these three principles are based upon these three questions that will be asked in the grave. Wa laysa maqsoodu al-imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhabi rahimullah taala hasr al-usuri fi thalatha. And the intention of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab, may Allah have mercy upon him, is not saying that all of the principles of the religion are three. لِأَنَّ لَهُ الْأُصُولَ sitta Because he also has a book called The Six Fundamental Principles of Islam. وَإِنَّمَا أَرَادَ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُصُولَ الثَّلَاثَةَ هِيَ أُصُولٌ مُهِمَّةٌ وَمُلِمَّةٌ لِلْعِلْمِ But what he intended is that these three uh, principles are important principles that are jami'ah lil'ilm mulimma lil'ilm which means that um, <clears throat> they're comprehensive regarding uh, uh, knowledge of the deen I mean that these three principles contain a lot uh, uh, of issues regarding the, the matters of the religion وَأُصُولٌ عَظِيمَةٌ لِمَنْ حَفِظَهَا وَفَقِهَهَا وَتَدَبَّرَ مَا عَنِيهَا and they are great principles for the one who memorizes them, understands them, and contemplates their meanings. Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, he says, For this reason, I encourage the students of knowledge, even the everyday people, I encourage them to memorize this book. And that they listen to the uh, audio recordings of the scholars who explained uh, 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 this book. Because this book was it was uh, it was explained by a, a a big a large group of scholars. So he says from the from the scholars who explained it and their books are printed 
Sharahaha al Alama to Ibn Baz. The Alama, the great scholar Ibn Baz, explained this book. Rahimullah Ta'ala. Wa kada al Alama to Uthaymeen. And likewise, the great scholar al Uthaymeen, he explained this book. Wa kada al Alama to Najmi. And likewise, the great scholar Ahmed al Najmi explained this book. Wa al Alama to Muhammad Aman al Jami. And the great scholar Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami, he explained this book. Wa al Alama to Zayd al Madkhali. And Shaykh Zayd al Madkhali explained this book. Wa aidan hunaka hashiyatun nafisatun libni qasim ala usul thalatha. And uh, a Shaykh by the name of Ibn Qasim, he has some precious footnotes that he put on the three, on this book, The Three Fundamental Principles of Islam. Rahmatullahi alayhim ajma'in. May Allah have mercy upon them all. Wa ghayruhum min ahl al-ilmi qad sharahuha. And other than them, from people of knowledge, have explained this book. Wa ma zalu ila al-yawmi yashrahunaha tusajjalu wa tutba'u fi kutub mutadawalatun bayna talabat al he said, until this day, uh, they continue to explain this book. It's recorded and it's printed in books, and it is in circulation between the students of knowledge. وَهَذَا كَمَا يُنَبِّهُ الْعُلَمَاءُ أَنَّ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِي يُشْرَحُ وَيَتَتَابَعُ الْعُلَمَاءُ عَلَى شَرْحِهِ يَدُلُّ عَلَى أُمُورِ He said, like this, or this, and the scholars have made the point that a book that is explained and that the scholars continue to explain points to a few different things. Minha annahu kitabun muhimun wa kitabun adim. From them is that it is an it is an important book and it is a great book. So he's saying that when you see a book like this that the scholars continue to explain time after time in recordings and in, in, in printed books, he said. Uh, from the things that you that that from the things that you can derive from that is that it is a great book and it is an important book. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ كَثْرَةَ الشُّرُوحِ عَلَى الْكِتَابِ الْوَاحِدِ تُعِينُ طَالِبَ الْعِلْمِ وَتُعِينُ الْمُسْلِمَ عَلَى فَهْمِ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ. He said, and, and and also you can understand from it that the many explanations upon a one a, a particular book can help the student of knowledge and help the Muslim to understand this book. So when you look at Ibn Baz's book, explanation of the book, you can derive certain benefits. You can understand certain benefits that Ibn Baz derived from the book. When you look at Ibn Uthaymeen's explanation of the book, you can uh, 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 see the, uh, the benefits that Ibn Uthaymeen derived from the book, etc. وَمِنْهَا تَسْهِيلُ وَبَسْتُ الشَّرْحِ And also, from the benefits that you can derive from the fact that many people explain, explain this book and they continue to explain it, is you also can it also makes the book easy to understand and it makes the explanation more vast. وبسط الشرح على هذا الكتاب بحيث يستنبط منه كل مؤلف وشارح الفوائد والحكمة والمسائل التي أشار إليها الشيخ الإسلامي محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى. Because it will make all these various explanations every uh, author and every explainer he derives his he derives uh, uh, benefits and wisdoms from the issues that Sheikh Muhammad Wahab Rahimullah Ta'ala spoke about in the book so he's saying all these various explanations of the book help you to understand the book better وَهَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةُ الْأُصُولُ الثَّلَاثَةَ الَّتِي أَلَّفَهَا مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْوَحَابِ Rahimullah Ta'ala سَرَى فِيهَا عَلَى الدَّلِيلِ he said in this book the three fundamental principles of Islam that was authored by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. May Allah have mercy upon him. Muhammad al Wahhab, he tread the path of Dalil in this book. He tread the path of Dalil, which means that he tread, he tread, in this book, everything he says, he brings his evidence, he brings his proof. He said he based this book upon proofs and evidence. And this is the condition of all of his books. He was diligent about having the proof and evidence. Okay. He said, 
He cultivates the student of knowledge upon seeking the evidence and seeking the proof and stopping at the proof. Which means that he, he's, he cultivates the student of knowledge to ask, what's the delay? What's the proof? And also to stop at the proof. Meaning when the proof is presented to you, you stop at that. And he cultivates the student of knowledge upon submitting to the truth and not opposing it. And upon seeking the evidence and the proof as was previously mentioned. The Shaykh said, We are in need of this. Shaykh Ahmed Bazmu said, We are in need of this. He said, because seeking the proof and seeking the evidence is light upon light. He said, the evidence enlightens the path and it places us upon clear knowledge. And seeking the evidence and the proof removes trials and tribulations and it rejects innovations and misguidances and he said so whoever speaks then it is either that he brings his proof and evidence and knowledge based upon that or else his statement is a rejected fabrication or we don't know whether it's true or false one of the two either it's a rejected fabrication or if it's something or something that we don't know whether it's true or false because he didn't he didn't yeah whoever speaks and he doesn't <clears throat> bring his proof and evidence then either what he's saying is a fabrication which is which is rejected or the least we can say is we don't know if what he's saying is correct or incorrect because he didn't bring his proof so basically Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad al-Wahhab he in his book he as we will see he always mentions the proof and what Shaykh Ahmed Bazmul is saying is that he's he is cultivating or he is teaching the reader the student to do the same to always request the proof and to always base your knowledge of the deen upon proof يقول الشيخ الإسلامي محمد ibn Abdul Wahhab عن هذه الرسالة he said Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab he said regarding this book قررت ثلاثة الأصول توحيد الربوبية وتوحيد الألوهية والبلاء والبراء this book contains the three fundamental principles of Islam this is, a, this is a statement from Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab where he said that he said that this book contains the three fundamental principles of Islam Tawheed al which means singling Allah out in his lordship Tawheed al singling Allah out in his worship Al-Wala wal which means allegiance and uh, uh, enmity which we will get to the explanation of that later Wahada huwa haqiqatu din al-Islam and this is the reality of the deen of Islam. So Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab, he said, وَلَكِنْ قِفْ عِنْدَ هَذِهِ الْأَلْفَاظِ The Sheikh, he said, the author of the book, Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab, he said, but stop at these words. What he means is that as you read the book, don't just read it like you're reading, uh, you know, any text. You read it and, you, and you, you, you contemplate the meanings. And this is what the scholars have done. They've read the book, they've contemplated it, and these explanations are benefits that they've derived from the book. وَاطْلُبْ مَا تَضَمَّنَتْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ وَالْعَمَلِ And the Shaykh Muhammad Wahhab, he said, Seek what this book contains from knowledge and regarding action. وَلَا يُمْكِنُ الْعِلْمُ إِلَّا أَنَّكَ تَقِفُ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مُسَمَّنْ مِنْهَا And he said that it's not possible for you to have knowledge unless you do that. Unless you contemplate the book. كَمَا نَقَلَهُ بَعْضُ شُرَّاحِ الْأُسُولِ ثَلَاثَةِ Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, he says that this, was, this, this statement of Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab was transmitted 
by some of the by one by uh, some of, one of the or some of the explainers of the three fundamental principles of Islam. إذن إخواني بارك الله فيكم سنتدار سو هذا المتن ونقف مع مسائله التي ذكرها شيخ الإسلام محمد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى. Sheikh says then, oh my brothers, may Allah bless you all. We will study this text and we will stop at its issues, or oh, that at, uh, at the issues that Sheikh Muhammad Wahab mentions. May Allah have mercy upon him. When he says stop at them, meaning that as he reads, he will stop and speak about some of the benefits that are derived from the statement of Sheikh Muhammad Wahab. I forgot to ask in the beginning how much time. Is this is 45 minutes? 45 minutes. So, how much we got left? Rough estimate. No. Oh. But just, just let me know when we, when we come in close. Alright. Al Metin, this is the text. So um inshallah ta'ala um Sheikh Muh uh Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul he has um he actually has a he, has, he actually has it to show subhanahu wa ta'ala how serious the scholars take this. He has a chain of narration going back to Sheikh Muhammad Wahab from more than one of his teachers. And um after he um after he explained the book he mentioned the chain, his chain of narration, which goes back to it goes back to one of his teachers, to, to a few of his teachers, and to the grandson of Sheikh Muhammad Wahab, to the Sheikh himself. And um, they passed the book down like that. Sheikh Muhammad Wahab he, he mentioned he, 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 he mentioned the book to his grandson. His grandson mentioned it to his student, and they passed it down like that. So when Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, after he after he went to finish the explanation. He said that every the, all the students in the institute that he was um, teaching in, which is an online institute, he said all he said that he permits all the students to convey the book the way he the way they heard it from him. So it you know it was to show how 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 serious they take this. Uh. So here's the beginning of the text. قال الإمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى the Imam. Muhammad the son of Abdul Wahab, may Allah mercy upon him, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'lam rahimakallahu annahu yajibu alayna ta'allamu arba'i masail al-ula al-ilm. Wa huwa ma'rifatu Allahi wa ma'rifatu nabiyyih wa ma'rifatu din wa ma'rifatu din al-Islam bin al-Adillah. Now this is a little bit redundant because we went through it before. MashaAllah ta'ala, this time... Is this from Sheikh Abdul Azbuk or is this from Sheikh? No, this is, um, this is Sheikh Ahmed Bazmu's explanation. This is his explanation. Ahmed Bazmoun. No, we're not. The re I, I chose for a couple of reasons. Number one, because we had so many breaks in between it, you know, and also all the lessons weren't. Rec I think we missed. We missed one recording. So I'm trying to keep it consistent. <coughs> yeah, I sent. Well, I sent the. Um, I, I just sent the biography of Sheikh of Sheikh Ahmed Bazmoun. A couple of reasons why I chose the switch. You know, those reasons, and also. Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul is very recent. He just finished like a couple weeks ago. So he speaks about a lot of modern day things going on right now. Like he speaks about ISIS. Like you know, that. he speaks about current day affairs. You know, uh, uh, um, and by no way is Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul, you know, Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul is a much bigger scholar. Mm -hmm. But I chose Sheikh Ahmed Bazmul's uh, explanation because it's, it's really current and he deals with a lot of things that are going on right now. Right. Because he just finished a few weeks ago yeah. with it. Um, and it's it's very it's very uh, it's it's very concise. He finished it in, in nine sittings, so I'm hoping that I prob we probably can do it in maybe two and a half months if you sit once a week, you know, because I want to finish this and then go on to the next book, you know, inshallah ta'ala. So this is um those reasons I chose to to do this one. Not to mention that I'm I'm in this online school, so it's to help me with my studies, inshallah. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, what was I gonna say? Um, okay, so and like I said, it's a little redundant in the beginning, but he's gonna go through it fast. So we'll catch up to the place we were last time really quick, inshallah. Um, okay, al ula who al ula al ilm who okay. Al thani al al amalu bihi al thalitha tu al da'wa tu ilay al rabi'a al sabru al adafi wa dalilun qulu taala al asr. إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر قال الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه السورة لكفتهم 
وقال البخاري رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل والدليل قوله تعالى فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك فبدأ بالعلم قبل القول والعمل شيخ أحمد بزمول الساس هذه الجمل المفيدة التي ذكرها شيخ الإسلام محمد بن وحاب رحمه الله تعالى سنقف من معها جملة جملة He said these beneficial sentences that were mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad al-Wahhab, may Allah mercy upon him, we're going to stop at them sentence by sentence. Qawluhu, rahimahullah ta'ala, his statement, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ibtada'a al-kalam, wa ibtada'a al-risala bil-basmala. He said he began his speech, and he began this treatise, or this essay, with the basmala. The basmala is a term for Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They call it al-basmala. Iqtida'an bil Quran al Karim. He did so, he, he did this following the Quran. Haythu anna al basmalata fi awwali. Because the basmala is in the beginning of the Quran. When you open the Quran, the first thing you see is Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So, following the Quran, when the Shaykh began his book, he started with, with the basmala. Wa aidan jaa an ba'd al salafi anna hu kana yaktubu al basmalata fi awwali kalam. Also, it came from some of the people of the past that he used to begin his books, that he used to begin writing with the Basmala. وَأَمَّا حَدِيثٌ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَالٍ لَا يُبْدَأُ فِيهِ بِبِسْمِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ أَبْتَرْ وَفِي لَفْظْ أَقْطَعْ أَوْ أَجْزَمْ فَهُوَ حَدِيثٌ ضَعِيثٌ He says, as for the narration that is attributed to the Prophet ﷺ, that says that every affair, every important affair that is not started with Bismillah, then it is like an amputee, then it is a weak hadith. There's a hadith that is attributed to the Prophet that says that every, it says that the Prophet said that every matter, every important matter that is began without saying Bismillah, then it is like an amputee. It is like an amputee, which means that it's not complete. Okay? There's a hadith that the Prophet says, it says that the Messenger of Allah said that every important affair that is not began with the Basmala is like an amputee. So the Shaykh said, this is, a, this is, this is an unauthentic hadith. Da'afahul mm Albani. -hmm. He said, Imam al Albani declared it to be weak. May Allah have mercy upon him. In his book called Irwa al Ghalil. Imam al Bani has a book called Irwa al Ghalil. In that book, he explains why this hadith is, is unauthentic. The Shaykh says, فَلَا يَجُوزُ لِلْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَنْسُبَ هَذَا الْحَدِيثَ لِلْنَّبِي He said, so therefore, it is not allowed for Muslim to attribute this narration to the Prophet. May Allah, have, uh, 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 may Allah extol him a grant in peace. Because it is a weak hadith, even if it is famous and widespread with some of the people. He said, so here, he said what means so here, it is obligatory upon the student to make a habit to search for the truth. And that he doesn't refute the truth due to previous knowledge that he had. And that he frees himself up for the truth. He says, yes, it's possible that you may have learned that this hadith was good or authentic. He said, but... That which is correct after a thorough research and looking uh, at the various chains of narration which was done by Imam al-Albani, may Allah have mercy upon him in his book Irwa al-Khalil, Imam al-Albani determined that the book, that, that the hadith is weak from all of its chains of narrations. So it's not allowed for you and it's not permissible for you, O slave of Allah, to seek this to use this proof uh, the, this hadith as evidence another time after that except that you warn from it and that you clarify the fact that it's weak so, okay so basically he's saying that um, Memel al-Bani checked this hadith he checked all the different chains of narration he says it's every, there's, a, there's a weakness in every single avenue of transmission regarding the hadith so the point that the Sheikh is trying to point out here is he's trying to point out that when the truth, even if you knew, even if you thought that the hadith was authentic, when the truth comes to you, you stop there. 
he said that you shouldn't refute the truth due to previous knowledge that you that you had. You know, a lot of times people say, well, you know, um, basically, uh, which one? He the church is saying that you shouldn't refute the truth due to previous knowledge that you had. Just to give an example, some people may say, uh, well, uh, you the messenger of Allah, so Allah alayhi wasallam, he didn't pray with his hands at his side. And you say, well, you know, uh, my father prayed like that. I, I was told that Imam Malik prayed like that. You know, but once the proof and the evidence is established, which is also why, when we enjoin the good and forbid the evil, we we have to know the proof. You know, you can't just come to somebody and say, "Don't do this." You gotta bring the you gotta you gotta bring the proof. You gotta bring the evidence. You gotta make sure that it's not something where there's more than one opinion regarding the scholars. That it, that is a it's a tolerable disagreement. You know, you want to make sure that it's. It's, it is there's no it, you know there's no it's not a, it's, a, it's it's not a, there's no tolerable disagreement regarding that issue right there and you come with the proof and likewise when that when it comes to you like that you uh sorry about that that's my daughter don't worry about it i answer i answer, I answer later on <laughs> Okay, so um, not sure. so um, right. So uh, basically, he's saying Mimal al-Bani, Mimal al-Bani, uh, um, Mimal al-Bani checked, Mimal al-Bani checked this, checked this, uh, 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 um, this hadith, and he determined that it is unauthentic. So the Sheikh he continues. He says, <coughs> the Sheikh he continues. He says, um, he says, he says, it is sufficient for us. That the Bismillah is in the beginning of the Quran, as was mentioned previously, and that some of the pious predecessors used to write the Bismillah in the beginning of their books. So he's saying that's sufficient. You know, we don't if the Hadith is authentic, we don't need to use it. It's sufficient that the Quran starts with the Bismillah, and it's sufficient that some people in the past used to start their writings with the Bismillah. That's good enough. If, if it's authentic, we don't want to use an unauthentic hadith to try to use it as evidence. Qawluhu i'lam rahimakallah. The statement of Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab, Khadija, I'm going to ask you, inshallah, when we're done. The, 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 uh, um, the statement of Sheikh Muhammad al-Wahhab, um, may Allah have, uh, no, may Allah have, have knowledge of the fact, may Allah have mercy upon you. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Ahmed Bazmul says, i'lam, um, <clears throat> Meaning when the Sheikh says has, Have knowledge of this fact He says that means have certainty And be uh, 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 And have no doubt When he says have knowledge of this fact Means have certainty and have no doubt Well itiyanu bi kalima i'lam Tufidu al-intibaha Wa tanbiha Li talib al-ilmi Lil masail al-lati yadkuruha He says so when, when the Sheikh brings this word I'lam, which means <clears throat> have knowledge of this fact. Basically, he's trying to draw your, draw the, the attention of the student of knowledge to the issues that he's about to mention. And these are issues that we really have to uh, be concerned with. And that we pay attention to and that we memorize. Then the Shaykh, he made dua that Allah has mercy <coughs> upon the student of knowledge. He said, I'lam rahimakullah. Have knowledge of the fact may Allah have mercy upon you. وَهَذَا مِنْ حُسْنِ تَرْبِيَتِهِ وَعِنَايَتِهِ And this is from his good uh, cultivation and his concern one year, and that he makes and that he supplicates for his Muslim brothers and that he supplicates for the students of knowledge and this is the characteristic of the scholar the scholar is zealous upon, uh, for good upon good or he, he is uh, uh, um, the scholar is zealous upon good and upon benefiting the people and upon guiding the people and that a Muslim, and, he's, and he is, he is, he is uh, zealous or excited about making a Muslim enlightened with the truth. 
and that and making a Muslim uh, 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 implement the truth. And we only have a couple of minutes left, we're gonna, so we're going to stop here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa tubi laik. Until next week. It was something about when he had his hands on the side when he came mm -hmm. up. It was a